Hi, Chris Kuzmal here. Today, we're going to begin our final unit uh, for this series of lectures on logic. And that unit corresponds to induction. In induction, many of us have already learned that there's this notion of a base case and there's this notion of an inductive case. Computer scientists write code that invokes induction. But here we get to see induction in its purest form. We get to see induction defined as a rule of inference, a formal rule of inference that then we can match precisely. But first, let's talk about induction in general for those of us who haven't seen it before. Um, and what it does is it refers to the idea of generalizing from one or more specific examples to a general rule for all cases. Um, and formal induction provides for a sort of a step that is a generalizing step that allows you to, to, to not just take it on evidence, but take it on proof that something is true. Now, when we're doing mathematical things, we might come up with a number of specific examples. We might say, for example, that f of a equals one, or g of one is one, or that two plus one is prime. All of these are observations, mathematical kinds of observations that you might make about the world that you're working in. But it's kind of hard from a single example to draw a conclusion. But you might begin to get an inclination of what is what a generalization is. If you see another example, so if f of b is 2, you see g of n plus 1 equals g of n plus 2n plus 1. If you see that 2 times 3 plus 1 is prime, you might sort of get a tickling feeling in the back of your head. Oh, there's there's a pattern here. There's I can I could generalize this. And and you know, I think personally I would at this point start to think, well, maybe f of c is 3 and f of d is 4 and so on. We begin to start to make predictions. That's sort of what scientists do. We're not talking about mathematicians at this moment. We're talking about scientists make observations and start to make predictions. And f of c is three. And yes, f of whatever letter it is, is the number that corresponds to the letter. And we might be able to make a generalization. And those first two rules about g, the first two observations about g, actually are enough mathematically for us to make a generalization, which is interesting. Meanwhile, we plug along with this observation about prime numbers. Not only is two plus one prime and two plus three prime, two times three plus five, excuse me, two times three times five plus one is a prime. It seems like we're getting a pattern over there. It looks like it's a product of all the primes plus one. Well, wow, that's gotta be prime. That's what it seems like, okay? The generalizations that we can make about f of a, f, b, f of c, though, that's not something that we actually can quite formally prove. Our intuition says that it's clear what f of d is, but f of d has not been proven to be 4. And meanwhile, we might observe that 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 plus 1 is prime. We've got four examples which kind of are confirming our hypothesis. As scientists, we're starting to think that this is a law of physics, but as mathematicians, we have not. We have not proven the product of all the primes less than a given number plus one is prime. It feels like that might be true, but it turns out, in fact, I'll cheat and tell you, it's not true. So there's different kinds of induction. The most basic is called linear induction, which involves a base element and a successor function a, with a unary function constant in our uh, Erbrand logic. And we are going to find that the base element, if we call it B, entails S of B, entails S of S of B, entails S of S of S of B, and so on, so that, that we can prove that the, the for, for every element of our Ebron base, if this is our Ebron base, then everything, uh, th th then, th then every single element of the Ebron base as expressed here evaluates to true. And so, we can make a rule of inference for linear induction. If we have a base case that's psi of b, and we have an inductive case that's for all u, psi of u implies psi of s of u. If we prove these two things, <clears throat> and if these are the only two things that we need, we, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slightly off. We have, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we assume psi of u, and then we prove psi of s of u. And that means psi of u implies psi of s of u. And that means that for all u, psi, <clears throat> psi of u is true. That's the rule, the, 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 the rule of inference for linear induction. 